Uh, we get a chance to talk. To, I, I saw the Rose on TV the other night. I was watching him. He was on TV there, laughing away, having a having some laughs on TV. But you know what the difference is? There's so many guys on there now. It's like a, it's like a cast of thousands. Okay, <laughs> but it's hard. You know, you guys look like the AAA guys compared to the Fox guys when you look at the stats. I mean, that's the problem. You know, <laughs> the stats on the Fox guys, even on the Fox guys, sometimes you don't know what the heck they're talking about. Uh, but those guys all have. I mean, think about it. There, Hernandez is like the guy who has to bat eighth in that lineup. Think about. <laughs> I mean, he's Keith Hernandez. He can't even put up his stats there. He's got Frank Thomas. He's got he's got Big Poppy. He's got A Rod. These guys got nine thousand home runs among the three of them. I know, Mike. I always had a saying: you guys bat third from seven o'clock to ten o'clock, and I bat third in life. That's exactly right. Yeah, because they do <laughs> bat third. Then I mean, man, oh man, think about how much think about how much offense you have there. How would you like to go through? How would you like to go through A Rod, Big Poppy, and and Frank Thomas in an inning? Huh? I think you know. I watch, I watched the Fox post game too a little bit before I got back. I mean, A Rod does his homework. You can tell Poppy is just a Poppy's huge lost. personality. And he just goes out there and says whatever he pleases. He has oh, no yeah. idea what he's going to say, but he's having it's fun. Great. He is having fun. I'll tell you this to be fair, I did a charity event, and the big star of the day was Big Poppy. And I'm like, oh, I don't, can't believe I got to spend a day with this guy. And <laughs> this is, him. he was great. He was, uh, he is just the nicest guy. And he's just delightful. I mean, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, yeah, you could not like him. He was, he was a great guy. He could not have been a nicer guy the whole day. I brought my eight year old to the Houston games, three, four, and five. And we're walking through the trailers and he, he turned to me, he goes, dad, that's, that's big Poppy. And you walk over and you're expecting like, Hey kid, what's up? Maybe a quick picture. He took my son off in the trailers for like five, ten minutes and was like going through hitting styles and had a spit on his hands before his pregame at bat. So yeah, he's got a special place. He's he's a he is a good guy, pretty yeah. special guy. All right, here we go. We're talking with Mark DeRosa, MLB Network Game Seven uh, coverage tonight starts at uh, three at Dodger Stadium. I just saw a dog on the field at Dodger Stadium doing a stand up on CNBC. I just saw him. He was at the field. <laughs> so I said, geez, dog's out there at the World Series. I mean, do do dog loves to go to the World Series. That's one of his things. It always was. He loves to go to the World Series. Absolutely. I actually, we got out of there in about the top of the ninth last night. We figured Jansen looked so good in the eighth. We could beat the traffic out of there, and I drove back to the hotel and had a few uh, adult beverages, and we watched the ninth inning, me and dog. Oh, you uh, did? I, okay, I loved, good. Yeah, so I there you go. Them. So you're there, too. There. All right, so here we go. Now, I have to tell you. I thought I'm a big home field guy in these games. I thought the Dodgers would win last night. I thought they'd find a way against Kirsch, against uh, Verlander, even if it was 2-1. I thought they'd win. I, 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 but I said this. Houston's either going to win tonight and, or, or they're going to lose the series. So I thought last night was their night. Tonight, I, I give them a bigger chance than the Yankees because no one had broken through that whole series. They've already won in L.A. That makes a difference. But I think this is a – I know they'll go McCullough's Morton and hope they do what they did to the Yankees. Yeah. But this is a tall order to win tonight. In that stadium tonight, it's going to be very hard for them to win. We got – you know what? I, I agree with you, but I love the way A.J. Hinch managed last night. I, I loved it. Listen, he could have kept, maybe kept Verlander in the bunt there in the sixth or the seventh inning and kind of rode him out a little bit more and see if the offense had got back in it. But for me, everyone was talking about Houston has to spend their bullet tonight. They have to go to McCullers in the pen, whether it's close or, or they're ahead or behind by a little. I disagreed with that. I felt like it was the Dodgers who had to I agree. push all their chips. I agree. In. No, I wouldn't have burned my guys. I wouldn't have bur I wouldn't have burned my guys last night if I was no. him. So I think Houston's – they're set up nice. Well, they got to go – they're going to go the two guys that shut the Yankees down because their relievers are awful. So they're going to go McCullers-Morton. That's what they're going to do. And then you might see Keuchel for an inning or two. Right, maybe. I really believe that. Maybe. And, you know, you don't see Giles. And, the, and they're going to – here's the thing I said opening the show, Mark. Tell me what you think. I said, listen, if tonight – and you can't deny him if he wants to do it. But if Kershaw wants to stick his head out of that bullpen or out of that dugout and go to the mound and get involved here tonight, he better realize that he's pushing all his chips to the middle of the table. He better be good. I completely agree with you. And I think what might say I don't want to say save him because that's not who Clayton Kershaw is. He will be in that bullpen. And they I I think they expected 
when they brought Kenley in last night in the eighth inning, they were kind of letting Houston know, like, Kershaw's closing tomorrow's game, just so you guys are aware. But Jansen only threw 19 pitches and looked really, really sharp. He'll close tonight, but the thing is, Kershaw could pitch two or three tonight. The question is, if Kershaw goes out there, is he going to be unhittable or is he going to stink the place up? Don't you think he's got to be unhittable? I would think for his own sake. I'd feel bad right? for him if he if he goes in there and has to throw 32 pitches trying to get a guy out again like he did to Breland. I mean, my God. Here's, Ker- here's Clayton Kershaw who's throwing everything with the kitchen sink at Breland and he can't get the ball by him. Yeah, I don't want to even think about the potential for L.A. to be winning that game in the seventh and he comes in and gives up the lead. That would be Gives just- up a two-run jack. Forget Horrific. it. Forget Horrific. Forget Horrific. Horrific. Or- he better stay in the dugout if he wants going to do that. And he can he cannot do that. How about last night, Roberts pulling Hill when he did? because the, he had to. The whole stadium booed him. Yeah, I thought he had to, though. You can't live with yourself. I agree. If you load the bases, I agree. Bregman, he had to go righty there. The he had to go righty there. He had to. But how you saw how mad Hill was. He wrecked everything in the dugout. But here was the amazing thing. You rarely hear the fans' first guess, and they all got it wrong. They all booed him for taking him out. Well, I think they were, they were coming off a bad taste in their mouth from Brandon Morrow not getting an out in the last game he pitched. But he had been used so much five out of six days. He had never gone three in a row in his career. So that day off really revitalized him and Jansen. You could tell their bullpen, Maida threw the ball really good last night. They needed that day off. I thought both managers managed an excellent... They managed an excellent game based on the situation last night. It really did. Plus, I don't know if this is still true. This used to be true. We're talking with Mark DeRosa, MLB Network, Game 7 tonight. Pitchers used to love that Dodger mound. I got to figure they're the home team. They got to love that Dodger mound, right? Pitchers love pitching in Dodger Stadium, right? It was it was my favorite surface to play on. I thought it was the one infield where it was like U.S. Open fairway, the, the infield grass, the dirt is to perfection. So I'm sure the mound follows suit. I, I mean, you Darvish has got to... For his sake, he's, he's what what a stamp to make on his free agency. He went an inning and two thirds last time out in Game Three. Like it's time for him to step up. All right, now it's Game Seven. All bets are off, but don't you think he's tempted to put one in his ear? <laughs> no, I don't. I would be. I think I think he made just a a foolish, insensitive mistake. I, I really do. You're down three nothing. Really you're do. putting one in his ear. I was. No, I don't think he is. I don't. I, I honestly don't. I think Carlos Beltran. I think Alex Cora. I think the leadership in that clubhouse probably went over to the Dodger side, apologized. I honestly do not think. I was concerned that mentally he was going to be wrecked for the series, and he showed back up after having oh, a terrible game. Yeah, I would he say back up and yeah. hit that home run off Clayton Kershaw and kind of like got back in the series because he had looked bad threw a ball away on a double play, went over three with a couple other double plays in the game before. So, no, I think I think that uh, will be handled properly. You know, uh, we're talking with Mark DeRosa, and last night Houston had that one glimpse where they could break the game open. And if they had gotten that game to 3 nothing, I think Verlander would have got it home. Uh, you know that? He didn't I have enough too. of a margin. He didn't have enough of a margin in that game. But they came within an inch. They were within one hit of breaking that game open. If they had broken it open, that, you know, if they got in the three, I think they would have been champions today. I really believe that a couple things went wrong. I thought Reddick had a bad at bat. Terrible at bat. You got to get that run third. home. Get yeah, the ball. Gotta, get the bat on the ball. Yeah, you work the count to 3 1. And, and, I mean, you notice, Mike. You get count leverage there. You're selling out. Oh, come on. Uh, and, please and hit a fly ball. A Just elevate and hit a fly ball. But then, I, I mean, for Moro to come in and pitch the way he pitched and, and get through Altuve and those guys. And I think the biggest play of the game, we're going to go over and demo it with Sean Casey later today, was the pick by Cody Bellinger at first base. Oh, absolutely. What a great line. pick. What an absolutely great pick. And Turner didn't have a good game. He threw that ball in the dirt. Plus, he didn't get yeah. a run home that I would have bet you a million dollars he would have got the run home. 100%. 100%. I was shocked. I mean, if a guy wait. could hit a fly ball, it's him. I, I was shocked he popped the ball up. And, and I thought everybody kind of woke up. I mean, we talked about Houston winning game 5, 13, 12, and their offense is alive. Well, hey, the Dodgers scored 12 runs. I mean, so they came into yesterday feeling pretty good about themselves. Verlander, he was putting in no, – A.J. was put in a tough spot right there where you wanted to keep Verlander in, but 
hey, if, you, if you're going to go for it, I mean, this is the only opportunity for you to at least take a chance. The Dodgers haven't really hit in, in, in very sporadically in the series. Uh, Turner hasn't even hit since game one. You know, hit, Turner missed the clutch. Is hitting 130 in the series. Uh, Bellinger so, has looked. And Bellinger struck out four times last night. That's the yeah. middle of their lineup. Tonight, where do you look? No one, listen, the, the, that Houston 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is nasty. I mean, Man. really nasty. Because Bregman's a really good hitter. I mean, and and Guriel's a really good hitter. You know the other guys are terrific players. And Springer's the MVP in the series so far. He's been unbelievable. But who do you trust or who do you rely on? Do you think Turner breaks out? Yeah. Uh, do you, do, who do you rely on in that, in that lineup tonight? I, I really do. I think you got to rely on the first four guys in the order. I mean, Chris Taylor's found a way to get on base. He's, he's had some big offense. hits. He's had he's, he got, he's had big hits. Hey, he reverted back to who he was last night when the chips were on the line. He went back to the guy who just looked to drive the baseball the other way. Well, how about the I, hit I, up the how about the hit up the middle of the night before in the ninth inning? How big is that hit with two nine. outs? That's an incredible at bat. I thought an interesting thing. We had Dave Roberts on on the show. And he had mentioned to us that Chris Taylor didn't like to bunt. And in that situation, they were down one nothing, first and second, nobody out. And I'm saying, well, the whole world, if they were watching MLB tonight, knows that Chris Taylor's not bunting right here. Where it would have been, I mean, you're playing for Bobby Cox back in the late That's 90s, a bunt. early 2000s. That's a bunt That's every a bunt. day of the week. A- every day. And, and twice on Sunday. That's a bunt. Yeah. And he takes a huge swing on his first one. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You know, a uh, different game. Yeah, it is a completely different game. And the ball going out of the ballpark, let's be honest, the ball he hit for a home run, that ball just seemed to keep traveling. I mean, that yes. ball didn't look like a home run off the bat. It was 68 degrees with a marine layer. It was cloudy skies i i did not think i mean when george springer got that ball early in the game i mean that was a he had moved traffic to get that thing out and then jock peterson how'd you feel about jock peterson running around base no i can't stay I, I tell you right now i don't understand it there's something the, the, something in the dodge of water the way they run the bases i mean hey, if if there was guys from the old days on the mound they would all have welts i mean my oh, god yeah. i mean the way they run the bases they're pointing at everybody but everybody in the building it's the biggest point uh, point of contention in the trailers. Some guys absolutely love it and think it's good for the game, and some guys, you know, the old school guys. I think it's soft. It. I think it's softball. I don't think it's major league baseball. You know, you don't act like that when you hit a home run. This isn't little league. <laughs> I don't mind you getting excited. I don't mind you know playing in in those games. You really do like black out with adrenaline and excitement when you do something really good. But there, yeah, there's got to be a little bit of been there, done that. All right, Ken McCullers. We're talking about Mark DeRosa, MLB Network. Ken McCullers and Morton, due to the Dodgers, what they did to the Yankees at home, which is absolutely mystify them with the curveball. Can they do that to the Dodgers tonight? 100% they could do it. I think it sets up, and that's why I love the way A.J. Hinch managed that game last night, because if he was put in a situation where it was 1-1 and he was going to have to warm up McCullers and use that bullet, he was going to come into tomorrow, to today with Charlie Morton on short rest, who hasn't pitched on short rest since, like, 2008, and a bullpen where Keiko coming out of the bullpen, a Davinsky, it would have been a completely different game. So the fact that he managed that game, I felt properly bullpen wise and saved that McCullers bullet. I think they set up really good tonight. So you think that you think McCullers, who has been really good in the postseason, you think yes. he's going to throw well tonight? I think he throws well tonight. Do you I think, think you Jarvis? Do you think you Davis will be any? We can't be worse, but do you think he'll be acceptable tonight? I think he'll be better. There's been a lot of talk out here, Mike, about the balls being different. But what is going guys, on? Let's talk about that for a second. Do you buy yeah. all? Do you Kershaw thirty-two sliders, one swing and miss, can't spin the curveball, can't spin the slider, can't get any grip on the ball, can't throw anything except the fastball with this baseball sliding out of their hands? Do you buy all the pitcher talk about the baseball? I have to buy it. When you're hearing Kershaw, you're hearing Verlander, you're hearing Dallas Keuchel, you heard Luke Gregerson. I mean, these guys have been around the game a long time. If they say it's different, they know. I mean, you. I watched Verlander. I watched him yesterday in about the fourth or fifth inning. He threw back three balls in a row. I don't know if TV caught that on camera, but he was searching for one that he could spin. You could tell. 
So they said McCullers proved it by t- by blindfolding, and, and he picked the slick ball yeah. six out of six. And both these guys rely on their breaking stuff. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be super interesting tonight. I think McCullers has definitely got like he's got a knack for really knowing how to spin the baseball. I mean, I think it's become almost his fastball, even though he throws 97 miles an hour. I, I would trust in the fact that he's going to bring it. And I, Darvish is a, is a wild card for me. I don't know how, how long they're going to last with him. So they have Wood back to, to back him up yes. with. Wood. And, and Kershaw. Kershaw. And, and Kershaw. Their, and their bullpen. And then their bullpen. they got enough pitching. The question yep. is, can they score a couple of runs? That's the question. Can they, Especially, can their lefties get some hits off, off McCullough's? It's, I mean, Bellinger's got to be better. We're talking, I mean, we were talking yesterday, guys were saying he, they might have to move him in the lineup. Where, where, I mean, not now. Not now. You, not now. Not now. Game no, seven, where no. are you putting him and no. who are you moving in his place? Right. I mean, you trust not, Yasiel Puig? No. TK not Hernandez? Now. No, not now. You got to go with what died brought. with this guy since April 25th. You go with guy. what brought you here. That's all. Yeah. That's what you do. You're in the seventh game. Not You don't change now. You're in the seventh game of the World Series. I mean, exactly. come on now. That's not the time to change. I mean, that's it. Um, what do you what? Where's the pressure? I mean, you 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 were Clayton good, you, Kershaw. Oh, we know that one. We know that one. But in the everyday lineups, where's what have you seen? Which guy do you think is ready to respond? Listen, you were a good big game player. What, which guys do you like? What you're seeing right now, and which guys are you worried about right now? I thought Justin Turner had a rough night at the at the plate last night, but he had been swinging the bat really good. He hit. A double off the wall in Game 5 that almost got out. He lined out twice. He should have had a sack fly. There was miscommunication in Game 5. I thought that bullet to right field. He's had good at-bats. He won't be – the moment won't get too big, too big for him. And, and I always rely on Altuve. I mean – Spring has it, Spring has been unconscious the last couple of games. Spring has been great. You think Spring – Spring has been great. Yeah, and he didn't hit at all against the Yankees at all. Mike – Mike, what I'd like to see is my boy Brian McCann get in the one tonight. Well, you know what? He's I, he's had a good postseason here because I know he, his bat looks slow sometimes, but he got big hits in the last two games against the Yankees. He's gotten some big hits. He's just missed a couple of homers foul, too. And he's faced – I don't think he's faced a right-hander, but like three at-bats in this World Series. It has been nothing but Rich Hills and Clayton Kershaw's and Tony Watson's and Kenley Jansen's from the right side. He has had – He's had his work cut out for him. He's had to work hard behind the plate. But, yeah, he definitely looks like he's confident in the box. There's no question. What is the feeling out there? The feeling that the Dodgers are invincible yeah. tonight? Is that the feeling? The feeling is the Dodgers will not lose game seven at home. You agree? Uh, I, I picked the Dodgers on opening day. I, I certainly think they're beatable tonight. I think A.J. Hinch managed a great game yesterday to give Houston every opportunity to win tonight. Well, you know what has to happen tonight. The, the starting pitcher on Houston has got to settle the game down right away. He can't let right the, away. If he lets the building get crazy, it's over. So he can, he, he's got to throw zeros for the first three or four innings. Otherwise, the building gets too crazy, and it's very hard to compete as the road team. So, so you've got to settle the building down right away. Yes, and it's funny because when you watch McCullers pitch, he pitches on emotion, which in a game like this usually is probably not the guy you want to go with. You want to go with that stoic Kluber, um, uh, uh, Strasburg, who they're not even listening to the fans. This guy is all in, lets that stuff really feed. He feeds off that stuff. But, man, he's done. I mean, he's been in these moments the last couple weeks, and he's performed, and nobody hits his breaking ball. Nobody hits it. Interesting. So, so, yeah. So Dodgers, but not. So you think it's dead even tonight, or you give the or you give the Dodgers a big edge? No, I think it's dead even tonight. I really do think it's a, a pick 'em game. I, I'm when it's a pick 'em game, I'm going with the home team. I Has this series? Uh, it, there's this feeling out here. You're in the middle of the World Series right now. We're talking with Mark DeRosa that. This has been very big for baseball. They got better ratings than football on Sunday night. They got a big rating last night. Does baseball feel like they have captured the imagination of the country in this series? I, I totally I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. I'm as big an NFL guy as there is, and I haven't even checked in on it, to be honest with you. These games have been – there's so many superstars. We were, talking, we were talking yesterday. You're looking at future Hall of Famers in Verlander, Kershaw, Beltron. There's guys on the fence, Utley. There, there's, there's, and then the young superstars that have come 
with Correa and on the flip side, Corey Seager. There's talent all over these fields. That was a reputa- reputation play last night. I was watching that, and I said, you know what? Verl- Udley hasn't had a hit in a month, and Verlander <laughs> is scared to death of him. <laughs> because, be- because he remembers what he used to be. He's, yep. He can't get past the fact that he thinks Utley can take him out of the ballpark right here. And it's, you know what? It, it, and he hit him in the foot with a bad pitch because he was scared to death of him. That's who Chase Utley is. 0 for 29 in the postseason coming into last night. Never budges. I mean, just that old school, I'm not losing my toehold. Even in a double play where you can't get taken out. You can't even, you, it can't happen in today's game. He tries to force a, a replay by presenting the fact that Josh Reddick went out of his way to get him. He's just old school guy. You can tell why th- those guys really rally around. And, him. He's and, been huge for Seager. And it's amazing because you could, it wasn't the guy who can't hit that's up there. In Verlander's mind, it was really the guy who still hit home yeah, runs all nine. the time. It's, it's the 09, 09 guy that the Yankees stadium. couldn't get out. Absolutely. That's who it was. I was saying that. I was saying that he's afraid of him. He really is yeah. because he thinks he can still hit, even though he can't hit anymore. He still thinks he can hit. Well, what does Springer have four homers in the World Series? The last guy to have five is Chase Utley, so he's got a chance to match him tonight. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Enjoy the game. You got it, Mark. Thanks very much, Mark DeRosa, MLB Network. So there he is out there. and. Give Houston a di- listen. You got to favor. You got to favor the Dodgers tonight. That just logic favors the Dodgers tonight. But Houston has a has a punch's chance. Plus, you know, McCullers and Morton killed the Yankees. That's what you're going to get reversed. It was Morton McCullers. Now it's going to be McCullers Morton because he's not going near that bullpen. He's going to go to those two guys and hope for the best. While the Dodgers are going to give you everybody. I don't know what to expect from you, Darvish. He was terrible his first game, so we'll have to wait and see how he is. You know, you Darvish gets to bounce back after all that's going on in this series. He gets the ball in Game 7. Boy, really wild time. Really wild. And at first at bat, Darvish, Guriel should be interesting, huh? Say what you want. It's still interesting. You know? It is to me, anyway. I, I think that way. So, that's where we are.